Years of cyber awareness training has paid off. I've received mail from someone and they sent me a thumb drive. I don't know any super nerdy people. Super nerdy per purple, purple and buffalo. Side of my DMs. It's a matter of utmost importance. Howdy, I'm Garrett Myler and I'm a nerd. And when I heard that angry cops didn't know a single one of us, it broke my heart. I just had to slide in his DMs to let him know on behalf of nerds everywhere, we got you AC. So he sent me this package and now I've got this suspicious thumb drive and I'm gonna show you exactly how I safely took a look at the weird stuff that's on it. But first, nerds come in all shapes and sizes, so I really should clarify that I'm the owner of Enclave Defense and a cybersecurity and digital forensics expert and consultant. Uh, I've prepared a few slides to guide y'all through the steps I took to safely analyze the thumb drive that was mailed to angry cops by a total rando. No, I will not put you in my computer as much as I want to. From all the years of cyber awareness training, I have been taught not to put unknown hard drives into my computer. Everything in my being is telling me not to put this in my computer so it's real. The cyber awareness training is real. Here is a legitimate moment where I have been sent a random thumb drive from an unknown person. And I am not going to put it in my computer. I just got to give a coveted pat on the back or POB to angry cops for paying attention to his cyber awareness trainings, understanding the risk and resisting the temptation to just plug a suspicious thumb drive into your computer. Jeff would be proud. Okay, so now I'll show you the steps I took and the tools I used to mitigate the risk and do this safely. So here's the steps that I took, but I'll share a little more details about my setup. First, I use my kid's homeschool laptop because worst case scenario, if all my other mitigations fail, it's not my much more expensive desktop that has work stuff, personally identifiable information, and whatnot that I wouldn't want compromised. I figure, hey, if the Russians really want my 10 year old's book report that bad, they can have at it. Of course, the laptop has all the latest updates installed. Um, I'm using Oracle VirtualBox as my hypervisor with a Windows 10 Flare virtual machine that's preloaded with a bunch of relevant tools and packages. Um, but one thing it doesn't have preloaded is FTK Imager, so I installed that as well. And I know GUI-based tools don't feel as elite because they don't make it into TV hacking shows or whatever. It's insane. It's completely Linux-based. Open source programming. Or her GUI is mind blowing. But, but it's free, I can do what I need, and I'm already familiar with it through my graduate program. So here I am in the Flare VM. Um, you can see here that the internet is connected by default, and I don't want that, so I'm going to turn it off, disconnected through the network settings, changing, the, changing it to the host only adapter. Um, and you can see here the internet is now disconnected from the VM. Uh, I'm gonna double check, you can open up the browser, see if it gets to a website, and it doesn't, so it is disconnected, but it's just the VM that's disconnected. The um, laptop, the host, is still connected to the internet. Um, I could disable it if I wanted to, but in this case I don't think it's necessary. So now I'm gonna go to the autoplay settings on the laptop and turn off autoplay so that when the USB is connected it doesn't automatically engage it. And I'm going to do the same thing in the VM. Now that autoplay is off I can safely connect the and the internet is disconnected from the VM I can safely connect the USB. You can see it's not here and then now that I connected it it shows up. I'm going to click it to allow me to access it from the VM. Um, I'm going to open up FTK Imager to take a um, forensic image of the USB. So I'm going to click uh, create new um, image and I'm going to choose the USB as the source and 
I want a raw DD file. I'm going to add some details here for the the case or for the for the image. Put my name as the examiner. Um, now I'm going to point to where the folder destination of the image is going to go and the name. And I'm going to put zero here because I don't want it fragmented into separate images. And click. Now this is uh, going to take a long time. So it's a 32 gigabyte thumb drive and I've already done this so I'm going to click cancel. So I don't have to wait the 40 minutes or whatever it was. Now that I have my forensic image, I'm going to um, disconnect the USB. You can see it's still there, and now that I disconnect it, it'll go away. Now I want to uh, add the forensic image as an evidence item, so I'm going to click this button here, and it's an image file. It's not like it's no longer a physical drive; it's an image. So I'm going to uh, point to where that image is, and this is it right here. So I'm going to click finish and now I can explore the file system and its structure. So I'm going to open it up, open up all the folders. Um, you can see here there's a two Sarge folder and that seems interesting. There's three videos and a text file that I want to take a look at. There's a lot of other subfolders. So I'll quickly poke around see what's in those. Uh, looks like some pictures, more pictures, alright lots of pictures here. A couple more text files. Alright, so um, I'm definitely interested in this two Sarge folder so I'm going to right click and um, extract the, a list of hashes um, for all the files, the 140 files um, under the two Sarge. So it's going to take a while. I've already done it, so I'm going to click cancel. This is what the hash file looks like. It gives me both MD5 and SHA-1 um, hashes and the file names. I don't need the... all I need is one set of hashes. So I'm going to delete the SHA-1 and the file names and um, just keep the MD5 hash and save it as a new um, file which I've already done. This is a CSV comma separated values. Now now that I have the hashes um, I can and the and the USB is disconnected I can reconnect to the internet. So I'm going to change the network adapter back to NAT network address translation and so that I'm connected to the internet and I'm going to want to search those hashes on virus total. It's a data set um, that will help, can, is useful, very popular to identify m malware. Um, and you can upload hashes, but only one at a time. So I'm going to find this uh, Python script that allows me to do uh, bulk file hash to check, to check multiple hashes instead of one at a time. So it requires Python but fortunately the Flare VM already has Python installed so I don't need to do that. I just need to um, go to the Python script itself and I'm following the instructions by clicking raw and then click saving as and you save it as a Python script and you gotta remember where you saved it. Then I'm gonna open up a PowerShell window here and this is the Python script that was downloaded and it's you know, in the right directory where I'm in the directory where it was downloaded. Then I'm going to um, put in the MD5 hash file that I created and now I need my virus total API key. So um, once you get an a virus total account for free, you, can, uh, you have an API key that you can use to access the API. So, um, I'm not going to expose my API key, but this is what it looks like when you search. And um, this means that it's not found. Those hashes are not found. But I, I found a couple malicious, I added a couple malicious um, hashes 
for known malware. So that's what it will look like right there. It'll be much more busy if it is malicious. But in this case, um, I already ran it. All the files in Tusarge, Tusarge are not malicious, or at least not found in the virus total database. So it's not a hundred percent guarantee, but in this case, it's not very likely. Um, so I'm going to switch it back. Um, to host only disconnecting the VM from the internet so that I can start opening up some of these files that um, in, in Tusarge. Just in case I'm disconnected to the internet. Um, but first I want to open up Wireshark, which will allow me to capture, um, if it does an attempt to reach out to the internet, it'll capture it. Um, ca capture the traffic packets. So I'm going to collect on Ethernet while I open up the files in under two Sarge. So I'm, I'm going to extract this picture just uh, to show you how it's done. Right click, um, choose the folder where it's going, and extract the image. Now I'm not particularly interested in the images so I've already um, extracted and redacted one of the text documents and here we see that the uh, he says he has 33,000 kids because he was part of this artificial insemination program that while he was stationed in Germany and he went to a porn site uh, and met up with some Russian girls that told him about uh, Russian assassins and uh, apparently there's some FBI assassins as well, so pretty wild stuff. All right, so finally we get to my findings. So by looking first at the videos and text files on the thumb drive, I learned that at least originally um, it was not actually prepared for angry cops, but a dude that goes by Sarge that apparently lives on the other side of the country from him. The pictures were pretty random, and taking the time to run steganography tools on them would most certainly be a huge waste of time, so I didn't bother with that. Uh, the guy who sent the, the thumb drive to AC appears, in my opinion, to be a conspiracy theorist that has a lot to say about Russian assassins connected to girls he met through a porn site, um, a secret government-run artificial insemination program, and eugenics, and um, mixed in between there are references of movie plots and musicians. Um, so I guess to summarize, you could say that this brovet has clearly lost his noggin, but the files he sent are almost certainly not malicious. Well, that sums up what I did with this, this sus thumb drive that was mailed to angry cops and what I found. Feel free to follow me on the socials to stay up to date with my work in information security and digital forensics.